everyone. My name is Paul Piskosz and welcome on today's webinar. So let me uh, start. Uh, first of all, uh, before we start uh, talking about uh, protecting Microsoft 365, let me wrap up briefly how our solution, uh, Store Backup and Recovery, looks like and work. There are three um, different approaches here. So first of them is to protect virtual environments, containers, uh, storages, uh, and application. The third one, let me jump on the right side, is endpoint uh, protection. You can protect Windows machine and uh, Mac OS based uh, machine. Uh, we uh, give you, I mean the user, uh, continuous data protection strategy. What does it mean? Uh, every uh, changes in documents will be uh, protected and user without administrator using the right click approach can easily restore uh, his uh, documents from a specific point uh, in time. Uh, Microsoft uh, 365 this is a major uh, topic of uh, today uh, meeting. We can protect uh, SharePoint, uh, online OneDrive teams and uh, users uh, mailbox. Uh, sorry for sorry for that uh let me jump back oh there major uh features so as i mentioned uh if you are going to protect um virtual environments uh, you can uh use agentless approach with full and incremental uh backups also store backup and recovery can work as a snapshot manager uh we give you generic uh, backup approach to protect uh, application also as i mentioned uh, to protect microsoft 365 we can uh, protect uh, exchange online onedrive uh, for business for business sharepoints and teams uh, channels as uh, well i mentioned about continuous data protector so let me jump on the another side uh, we can work as a proxy or a independent uh, backup server. Also, we gave you uh, open a RESTful API and with a recovery plan, uh, you can use us uh, when the disaster will happen. I hope you already know that slide. So let me wrap up uh, shortly uh, what you can see. It's divided into two sides. On the left side, you can see our uh, platforms, which we can protect agentless. On the right side, uh, you can see uh, plenty, let me say plenty, uh, different uh, backup destination, like object storages, uh, like file system or enterprise uh, backup providers. Heart is the storage backup and recovery. So our main goal um, for today is to protect Microsoft 365. Question is simple. Why we want to protect Microsoft uh, 365 uh, objects? Uh, answer, is, uh, answer is very simple. To uh, avoid or when the disaster happens or there will be uh, human mistakes or maybe ransomware attack, you can easily restore users' mails um, documents on OneDrive or even a uh, conversation in uh, Teams. Also, if it's possible, I know it's uh, it's a funny one, but if uh, Microsoft, uh, you lost connection to your Microsoft uh, services, you can easily restore also to a local administrator uh, PC. So what we, what we gave you uh, when you are uh, using our solution, first of all, administrator uh, can restore directly to user account or directly into uh, his PC and deliver that uh, mail to users in another way. Cross uh, account migration. What does it mean? Uh, very simple. You can restore exactly to the user account or to the different account. Also, there's a small uh, twist. If you in, in store backup and recovery, you add two different tenants, you can restore between to uh, tenants. I also already mentioned about RESTful API. Yeah, this is a feature also here, but let's um, look on the bottom. Uh, there are two uh, also um, points. First of them, automation, auto, automate uh, synchronization uh, users, uh, all uh, instances in your tenant. Well, uh, so if you add another account, if you add another mailbox, let's say a new user uh, came to your 
um, company, you don't need to uh, add them uh, manually in a policy. We can do it for you. And on the uh, at the end, uh, flexible uh, retention and backup SLA. I will show you how it works uh, during the live demonstration. Features, uh, let me jump back. Uh, we, uh, we give you incremental uh, forever strategy. So only the first backup should be the full one. The next uh, will be incremental. Uh, where you can store your backups? On the file system, Microsoft Azure Blob or S3. Also, we add lately a microfocus uh, data protector. And what we can protect? As I mentioned before, online max boxes, online calendars, uh, contacts, OneDrive for business, SharePoint, and the Teams channel. Teams, I mean channels, private and public, and uh, uh, conversation between two users. We call it chat one on one. How we work? This is a, a most uh, difficult slide in this uh, presentation. So uh, let me wrap up very quickly what we can see here. Uh, first of all, you need to create application inside your Azure ID. Uh, ID. Uh, in your internet. Uh, then to do that, uh, you need to provide once uh, your administrator login and password, then the token will be created and you never need to uh, add uh, that password again. Also, we don't store that password. So once uh, when you add uh, your uh, application, uh, we use a token to communication uh, into uh, from the node uh, using the graph a. PI. Application needs to uh, have some pro permissions, uh, to be specific, 40 of them. And uh, I believe I need to jump to another slide. So let me jump very quickly here. Uh, there are two ways to add your tenant into our solution. First of them is a manual one. You need to provide uh, free information like uh, tenant ID, client ID, and the secret. The secret is a simple password to application. The second one, uh, which I will going to show you during the live demonstration is using the assistant. There are several steps to cover and we will help you to add uh, your uh, application into our uh, solution. When you do that, after synchronization, you will uh, you can create your first backup SLA. So you need to select which feature you want to backup, uh, which users, which site, and also which Teams channels you want to uh, backup. Then, after the process of backup, you will be able to see uh, everything on uh, task console, what's going on, what tasks are running right now, and then you will be able, with disaster happen or user lost your e some uh, emails, you will be able to restore um, that. There are two ways. Uh, first of them, download to administrator PC. Second of them is restored directly into user account. Uh, yeah, the view of, uh, of uh, users and then the restoration options. There are several flags to cover. First of them is on uh, to rest uh, when sorry for that, uh, on where you want to restore your uh, emails. If you leave it empty, th that means you will be restoring directly into a user uh, mailbox. Second, the path. Yes, you can create the path and uh, we will be restoring directly into that path. Two different flags. Uh, so if user lost his email or delete uh, for accident, uh, you can restore delete files. Also using the versioning, you can uh, overwrite existing files. I believe this is a theory uh, and let me jump directly into a uh, live demo. All right, wait a second. So as I promised, uh, I will be adding my uh, tenant using the um, wizard assistant. But first, let's look like uh, let's look into the dashboard. Uh, you can easily see what's going on uh, on the main dashboard. So, how many entities are uh, protected in, in at that moment? The success rate of the backup, and also uh, how much you are using your uh, backup destination. In my scenario, there's a, a local uh, file system. Also, the diagram of daily activities. So let me add my uh, tenant into solution. How to do it? You need to jump into cloud section and select service providers. Then using the uh, button setup assistance are six steps to cover. 
So let's do it together. First of all, you need to jump into Microsoft site and provide the authorization code. Let me copy it. And simple as that, paste here. Then, as I mentioned, you need to provide administrator login and password. There's a simple question. Uh, yeah, I want to. And then you can close that window. So user is logging, perfect. So let me jump uh, into the next step. Create application. Yeah, um, why you want to create several application? Um, to speed up a bit of a backup uh, process. You can ask me why. Uh, of course, there are some um, difficulties uh, from Microsoft's site. We call it the throttling. Uh, there are several ways when the throttling can appear uh, on the user account, on the application, and also on the whole tenant. Throttling means the Microsoft is slowing down the backup process or also can uh, shut down the connection for uh, several or more uh, minutes. If you create more application, there's a chance uh, to avoid that situation. We recommend uh, create at least one application to every 500 users. In my scenario, there are several uh, accounts, so one uh, application will be enough. Okay, my application is created, so I can see my tenant ID, also and the application ID. Let's jump into the next step. There are more, uh, this is most uh, difficult step because there is uh, several copy paste uh, information here. So uh, let me show you how to do it. First of all, you need to open this page to grant uh, permission for the SharePoint. Then you need to copy and paste uh, application ID, copy and paste tenant ID, then at the end, uh, XML also need to be copied. You can or, can, or don't need to uh, uh, use a title here. I'm going to use a store as a name or maybe store one as a name of my application. Then appear a simple question. Do you trust storeware? Yes, I trust. So let me click it. Grants are uh, done, so we can uh, move uh, to another step. Okay, on this view, you will see uh, as many as applications as you create in step uh, three. There is only one application, so let me grant permissions. All right. As I mentioned, almost 40 of them. There is a list. At the end, it's accept. OK, this step is completed. So, so at the end, this is a step for the newly uh, tenants. When uh, you want to protect by our solution, you need to simple uh, open PowerShell and just copy paste and execute this uh, these commands. So my tenant uh, already I did it already in my tenant, so I can easily save my configuration. Uh, this is a wizard. So our solution or already known uh, my organization. So let me change a name here very quickly and I can save uh, my configuration. Next and the last step of the wizard is synchronization. Let me do it with you. At the bottom uh, task, under the task console, we can see the progress. Right now my synchronization is waiting. Not is attached to this task, we need to wait several seconds to complete. If there will be some kind of difficulties or uh, something uh, I need to explain one more time, give me a hint on the chat. There is a question options, so feel free uh, to uh, use it.
All right, my synchronization is done. So I, as administrator, can see in instance tab my users, my sites, and also the team's channels, which I can protect. How to do it? First, you need to create your SLA. Where? In backup SLA tab. I already did that. So let me show you how my SLA looks like. Okay. The first is the name, then is two options to add uh, your entities into the policy. First of them is auto assign. As I already explained how it works. So every uh, by default, it's every eight hours, uh, our solution will synchronize, uh, synchronize uh, newly added users and uh, by automate this, that users will be added into this specific policy. In my scenario, I'm adding my users by hand. So let's do it together. Next step is the feature. Here you can select how many features you want to protect in one specific policy. Please keep uh, in mind that policy will be attached to a specific user account, to specific sites or to specific team uh, channel. In my scenario, I'm going to protect mailboxes, OneDrive for Business, Chat 101, also the Teams uh, channel. Then you can select users. As you can see, I by the special uh, left the Brad Pitt uh, not attached. Uh, let me explain why later. Then I'm, all my teams are already added. And also at the end is the rule. In rule, you can define at the backup destination I select my cloud, this is a file system. Also, I can select the synthetic file system, or if I want, I can use a Microsoft Azure blob as a backup destination. Then you can uh, set a retention settings, uh, different retention settings for the different uh, backup destination. Also, when the backup should be uh, proceed. Uh, I select the Mondays, uh, the Saturday, and the uh, Sunday. After save, I can do my first backup. So let me jump into uh, instances. As you can see, all my users are in the policy without the brat. So there is an option to add a user directly into policy. So I'm assigning him right now. Okay, uh, my user is added. Let me uh, do a backup for the specific users. For example, the Johnny here. Simple as that. You select the user and click the button uh, backup. There are two options. You, I can always force a full backup, but in my scenario, full is already done. So let me do an incremental one. If I select uh, the according to policy, so all the features which, which uh, uh, was uh, selected before will be backup. But in my scenario, in this live demo, let me uh, backup only the user's uh, chat. So same approach, everything will be uh, here on the task console. During the backup, we need to be a patient, a patient for that. So let's wait together uh, to complete uh, this uh, specific task. Okay, the first of two tasks are done. Uh, we need to wait just a jiffy, I believe, uh, for the start task to uh, finish. Perfect. Okay, 50%. But I believe this task will finish without us watching. So let me uh, take you directly uh, into Johnny's uh, account and I will uh, show you what you can see inside every user, every site or every team channel. First of them, statistic very handy uh, for administrator divided into several section uh, you can see daily activities also you can see the backup statistic like a size time and the transfer rate and same situation uh, when you click into restore statistic i believe i did not use the journey to do the restore so my chart is empty bottom menu 
yeah that's true there is no restore history on this uh, specific user you can see the backup history the restore history and the schedulers which are attached uh, to the user and most important part protected data here in uh, the vital intersection like archive like mailbox calendars contacts onedrive and the chat you can see the protected uh, data let me uh show you the tree this is a tree which user to be specific this is a journey account yeah this is the same tree which you can see uh in uh sorry this is the same tree which user can see in his uh mailbox so uh, in the inbox are the several uh emails also let me show you the conversation one on one on this specific user uh let me jump into the morgan freeman and the johnny deep and let's try uh, to restore uh, this conversation i'm going to use the download option so after several seconds of course the task need to be uh, completed as you can see my backup is done that's a good one perfect so let's wait uh, together for the mode uh, part yeah the mount is done so the next step when i want to download uh, the specific mount part uh, i need to jump into the download uh, tab here you can see every uh, mount which you are uh, done as administrator and you are able to download this specific information directly into your personal computer shortly should the pop-up appear uh, with the zip file uh, you can download uh, file one by one folders or the mix them or plenty of uh, files at the same uh, time yeah then my download is completed let me jump uh, into the next part so in instance i'm going to show you something with the restoration uh, part let's use another account for example the morgans one and here in protected data let me focus on the uh, OneDrives. As you can see, I have two uh, folders there in every of each, in every, everyone, uh, everywhere, <laughs> in every folder there should be the file, yeah, the PNG of the Legolas. So let me try to uh, restore uh, one of them. For example, this one. As I mentioned, there's an option where doing, using, using a restore. There's an option where uh, you want to uh, restore specific file. If I left it empty, so we will be restoring directly into the Morgan's uh, Freeman account. Uh, I'm going to use restore to another uh, path. Let's call it photo Lego. I believe that should be enough. Then, simple as that use a restore button same situation every action which you done uh, as administrator should appear here in the task console also the restoration part and as already you know we need to wait a second uh, my account uh, of morgan is here let me uh, focus on the onedrive over there i created the new folder and shortly we should be able uh, to see the new folder over there it's still working so let's give him a time here yeah perfect the first step is completed so the next one I believe several more, more seconds and it will be done. During the best the backup during the restore, you need to be a bit patient. So I believe uh, you are still with me and let me remind you there is an open uh, place for the questions so if there will be any please feel free to uh, ask we're almost done that's a good one perfect nice so this is a cleaning one i believe yeah perfect there is a new created folder 
with the uh, restoration of uh, Legolas uh, photo. Great. At the end of this uh, presentation, I'm going to take you uh, directly into the Teams channel. I'm going to show you how we are uh, protecting the Teams. I mentioned about the public and the private private one. Also, you already seen uh, the private conversation between users. Uh, so the public uh, channel. Same situation, same approach in every entities. And also, you can see uh, in protected uh, data, last 25 uh, information uh, between uh, users in this uh, specific channel, including the file, including the GIFs uh, and uh, photos, for example. And please keep in mind the whole conversation will be restored so two options to do that uh first you can download the conversation directly into your pc as as a html file or restore directly into the users uh, uh teams so let's do this together okay same situation task created Task uh, console we, on ta in task console we can see what's going on right now, and as always during the restoration part we are waiting. Mm, I can see your chat right now. Maybe I will handle some a uh, question. Uh, Pradeep, you asking about the 500 user per application. Yeah, we recommend it uh, to use at least one application on every uh, 500 uh, user. And how we log the 500 users in uh, one application? In the same as you seen in my scenario, I know this is a small organization with only uh, several accounts, several mail uh, several mailboxes, uh, but the situation will be uh, the same. Unfortunately, this question I cannot see the end uh, part of that. Sorry. So uh, my restore is done. So let me jump directly uh, into um, Morgan Freeman's teams. And here uh, are the conversation between the Morgan and the Johnny, but the restore is over, uh, over there. So in the next step, you will be able to see the whole uh, conversation, not only last 25 as administrator, but the whole uh, conversation. And at the end, there is a GIF with the uh, cut and uh, thank you. So that's all everyone. Thank you for being in and let me right now uh, cover uh, your uh, questions. Okay, I uh, now I can see the last part of that question. Thank you uh, very much. Yes, that's a that, that's a goal here to create uh, every application. Sorry, one application every uh, for every five hundred uh, users. So math is simple. Yeah, that's true. I believe the presentation is recorded and shortly appear uh, on uh, our um, social media channels. So keep, stay in touch, and you will see uh, that. No, no problem. Thank you for uh, for being here. Uh, it's uh, is it possible to back up the SharePoint 365? Yeah, uh, we can protect the site and the sub site inside sites. I know. Uh, yeah, we also protect the SharePoint sites, and the approach is the same. You as administrator just select which site you want to protect, and then you have the same options. So you can download directly into your PC, or uh, you can restore uh, into Microsoft 365. No problem. This is a point of this presentation to look and feel how we work and how we can protect the Microsoft 365. All right. I believe we covered the subject today. So thank you very much for, for being here and see you next time. <laughs>